Hi, this is Nate from GamesKeys.net, and in this video, you're going to learn about the drop chances of all the items in the King Legacy. And, as a special treat, I'll be giving away two permanent dough fruits. To enter, simply like, share, subscribe, and share your King Legacy ID in the comment section below. Alright, let's dive right in. First up, we have the Jitter Sword. This starter sword has a drop chance of 5% and can be obtained by defeating Smokey on Starter Island. This sword is perfect for low-level players. It may not be the strongest, but it's a great starting point. Next, we have the Tashi Blade. This sword has a drop chance of 10% and can be obtained by defeating Tashi on Starter Island. This sword is a significant upgrade from the Jitter Sword. Now, let's talk about the Barbaric Axe. With a drop chance of 20%, this axe can be obtained by defeating Barbaric on Soldier Island. The Shark Blade is up next, with a drop chance of 10%. Defeat Shark Man on Shark Island to get your hands on this powerful sword. Moving on, we have the Gold Spear. This spear can be obtained by defeating Dory on Chef Strip Island with a drop chance of 5%. Next up, we have the Pole Sword. This item can be obtained by defeating Rumble Man on Sky Island with a drop chance of 5%. Following that, let's talk about the Black Orb, one of the rarest items in the game. With a drop chance of just 1%, defeat Shadow Master on Zombie Island to possibly get your hands on this powerful orb. Up ahead, we'll see Mom Blade. The Mom Blade has a drop chance of 15% and can be obtained by defeating the monster, or raid boss, on Zombie Island. Advancing to the Quacker Spear, which is also known as the Bicento. It has a drop chance of 5%. Defeat Quake Woman on War Island to add this spear to your collection. After that, we've got the Saber. It has a relatively high drop chance of 25%. Defeat the Mysterious Swordsman on Stone Island in the First Sea to get your hands on this powerful sword. Next in line is the Demon Trident, which has a drop chance of 5%. Defeat Seasoned Fisherman on Fishland to obtain this trident. Now direct your attention to the Hell Sword, which has a drop chance of 50%. Defeat King Samurai on Japan Island to get your hands on this sword. You can also obtain the Muramasa with a 15% drop chance of killing the exact same boss. Moving on to the next one, the Anubis Axe. With a drop chance of 10%, this axe can be obtained by defeating Anubis on Dead Tundra. Up ahead, we have the Adventure Knife. This knife has an extremely low drop chance of 1%. Defeat Flame User on Dead Tundra Island to get your hands on this rare knife. Next up, we have the Authentic Mace, which has a drop chance of 10%. Defeat the Dragon, Raid Boss, on Skull Island to add this powerful mace to your collection. Now shift your focus to the Sunken Blade, which has a drop chance of 5%. Defeat the Sunken Vessel on Loaf Island to obtain this sword. Up. 
Following up, we've got the Cookie Sword. Defeat Biscuit Man on Loaf Island to get a 5% chance of availing this sword. There is a similar chance of getting the shoulder armor for beating the same base. Advancing to the next item, Metal Trident. It has a low drop chance of just 1%. Defeat the Dome Master on Loaf Island to obtain this trident. Next up is the Blue Scarf, which has a drop chance of 5%. Defeat Dome Master on Loaf Island to get your hands on the Stylish Scarf. Next in line is the Dragon's Orb. It has an extremely low drop chance of 0.5%. Defeat the Elite Skeleton on Skull Island to obtain the Powerful Orb. Similarly, the Phoenix Blade has a low drop chance of 1%. You can get this blade by beating Miss Mother, or Big Mom, on Loaf Island. Moving forward in this exploration, I'll discuss the Flame Hair, which has a better drop chance of 15%. Defeat Big Mom on Loaf Island to add this item to your collection. Shift your focus to the Phoenix Tier. This tier has a drop chance of 1%. Defeat Miss Mother, or again, Big Mom, on Loaf Island to obtain this rare tier. Up ahead, we have the Ice Crystal with a 2.5 to 5% drop chance. Beating the Aslan enemies on the Shred Endangering Islands in the Second Sea can get you this item. Now head over to the Magma Crystal. There's only a 0.5 to 1% chance of getting this item after defeating the Volcano NPCs on the Shred Endangering Islands at the Second Sea. Next up is the Tengu Mask with a relatively better drop chance of 15%. Defeat the Ice King on the Treacherous Shed Endangering Island to add this mask to your collection. Going ahead, let's focus on the Oni Mask. To collect this item, defeat the Crimson Demon on Shred Endangering Island. There's only a 5% chance of drop. Next up, we have items dropped by Pondere at the Marine Headquarters. The Pondere Blade has a drop chance of 5 to 10%. If you're lucky, you also might get the Pondere Coat with a drop chance of 5%. Keep taking down Pondere to increase your chances of getting the items.
Moving onward, you can defeat Hefty at the same location and get two cool items. The Hefty Coat drops at a 5% chance. Hefty Glasses drop at a higher chance of 10%. Make sure to defeat Hefty multiple times to maximize your chances. Heading over to the Soldier Headquarter Island, you can obtain Lucidus's Totem by defeating any NPC. Now, at the Marine Headquarters, defeating Lucidus can get you Lucidus's Coat with a rare 1% chance of drop. Head over to the Pirate Skull Island and challenge Sally to get the Soul Crane with a 5% drop chance, and the stylish Sally's Crown with a slightly better drop rate of 10%. These items are totally worth the grind. You can also get many more items on the Pirate Skull Island. Defeating NPCs, for example, can get you Dark Beer's Totem with a 5% drop chance. Defeating the Dark Beard boss can reward you with the Dark Beard hat, but only with a 1% chance. The Dark Beard cloak with a slightly better drop rate of 5%. Moving onward, we can get the Apollo on Fiore Island by defeating Prince Aria with a drop rate of about 1 to 5%. On the same island, if you encounter Fluffy, you can obtain the Fluffy Glasses, which have a rare 1% drop rate. Following that, we'll shift our focus to Authentic Triple Katana, which can be collected from chests by defeating the Hydra or Sea King at Legacy Island. But the drop rates vary on the tiers of the chests. If you get Tier 1, then there's only a 1% chance of getting this Katana. Tier 2 can give you 10%, and getting the maximum tier, uh, Tier 3 for example, will grant you a 30% drop chance. Next on the list is the Arrow Scythe, which also drops from the Hydra or Sea King chests, after beating the boss, with chances of 0.072% with Tier 1 chests, 1% with the Tier 2 chest, and slightly better 5% with Tier 3, and a maximum chances of 10% with Tier 4. Now we'll direct our attention to Sea King Boss at the Legacy Island on the Second Sea. Beating the Sea King Boss will give us a 5% drop chance of getting the Sea King Jaw, a 1-5% to chance of getting the Sea King Fin, and a 5% drop chance of getting the Haoshoku Haki Color Change. Explore the chests after defeating the Sea King or Hydra Boss to get the Sea King's Blood with a 3% chance. Additionally, the Sea King's Skull has a drop rate of 1 to 15% during the Halloween event upon beating the Sea King.
Proceeding further, we can get to the aquatic anchor with drop rates of 1% to 45%, but it heavily depends on the chest's rarity, obtained after beating the Hydra boss on Legacy Island, Second Sea. Tier 1 chest will give you a mere 1% drop chance. Tier 2 will give you slightly better at 7%, and Tier 3 grants a better chance with 25%, but the maximum chances of availing a aquatic anchor is in the Tier 4 chest with a 45% drop chance. Similarly, you can obtain the Daybreak Cleaver by obtaining the chests that range from 0.6% at Tier 1 to 7% at Tier 4. And the Scepter of Flame varies from 0.7% at Tier 1 to 8% at Tier 4. Next, we get the Hydra Mask from chests after defeating the Hydra Boss with drop rates from 1.5% at Tier 1, 3% at Tier 2, 8% at Tier 3, and 15% at Tier 4. Moreover, collect the Inferno Cloak with drop chances of 0.5% at Tier 1, 2% at Tier 2, 5% at Tier 3, and 10% at Tier 4. Further, you can also get the Tomo Taiko after beating the Hydra Boss and opening the chests. The drop chances are 0.9% at Tier 1, 5% at Tier 2, 10% at Tier 3, and 15% at Tier 4. You can get the Hydra Tail from the Hydra Chest with a 5% drop chance. Proceed to the second C. Defeat the Ghost Ship to obtain the Eye Patch with a 50% drop chance. Next up, we have the Pirate Necklace with a drop chance of 10-20% to after defeating the Ghost Ship boss. For the Rare Dragon Necklace, the drop chance is an incredibly low 0.0000002%. Next in line is the Longavis, which can be acquired after defeating the Ghost Ship boss with an extremely low drop chance of 0.1%. After that, we have the Sea Wraith with a 5% drop chance after defeating the same boss. Now let's talk about the Dragon Standard. This item drops with a 5-10% to chance after defeating minions in both the first and second seas. Keep an eye out for those minions. Next up we have Avalon, which can be obtained from chest drops during server events. The drop chance ranges from 0.5% to 1%, so make sure to participate in those events for a shot at this item. You can get the Sweet Lozenge by defeating the Santa Raid boss during the Winter Event. The drop chance is 5 to 20%, so take on that boss for a sweet reward. For Halloween fans, the Pumpkin Smasher drops from the Jack O' Lantern boss in the second C with a 1% drop chance. Moving ahead to the second C, here defeating the Kraken Tentacle gives you the Kraken's Cachet and a title. Additionally, you have about a 5% chance of getting the Kraken's Ink. For the Ethereal Sword, you're going to have to wait three nights in the third sea for a Blood Moon to start, or keep changing servers until you find a spawn Bushudo Ape. Defeating the Bushudo Ape gives you a 1-5% to chance of obtaining this rare item. The 
straw hat drops from the village gunner raid boss with a 30 to 40% chance. The blue cloak can be obtained by passing wave 5 in the normal raid with a drop rate of 1 to 5%. The green cloak and the red cloak can be obtained by passing wave 5 in the normal raid. In the golden arena raids, you have a 0.5 chance to obtain the black cloak from the gatekeeper boss. Defeating the knight level 3500 in a normal raid can get you the shoulder armor. The next item in line is the gladiator helmet. Now this item drops from the warrior level 5000 in a normal raid. The blue admiral coat drops in normal raids in waves 20 and 25 from the triple swordsman with a 1 to 5% drop chance. To get the knight necklace, you need to pass the 30th wave in a raid and defeat Mike, also known as Mihawks. This item has only a 1% drop rate. In hard raids, you can obtain the Shadow's Cloak after defeating the first boss wave, but it has an extremely low drop chance. The Sentinel Armor and Abyss Sentinel Armor have a 1 to 5% drop chance after defeating the second wave boss. Items like the Oceanic Tentacle and Metal Fin can be obtained during hard raids by defeating the bosses, but with extremely low drop chances. Lastly, we have the Crustacean Armor with a drop chance of just 1% when defeating the Eldritch Crab in Wave 5 of the Hard Raid. And that's it folks, you've now learned all about the drop chances of all items in the King Legacy. Do us a favor and let us know about your favorite items in the comments.